Have you ever been in a relationship where it just seems off? Like something's not right in the relationship. Maybe it just seems a little weird or maybe just something's actually going on. You're like, wait a second, like this actually might be toxic or might not be healthy in the relationship. You see, a lot of times with people, when they're in relationships, they have no clue that their relationships might end up being something that's along the lines of narcissism or at the very least narcissistic. And these people don't understand what narcissism actually is. You'd think with having like lots of videos out there, with having like multiple people on multiple platforms, having hundreds and thousands of followers that more people would know, but every single day we get more people that are writing in or that are asking questions that have no clue about what narcissism actually is. They don't see it. They don't understand it. There hasn't been anyone to come alongside and say, hey, how that person just communicated to you is gaslighting. How that person just communicated to you is ultimately manipulating. And they don't have the tools and the, and the sets of things to be able to see of, hey, this is actually wrong. And this is actually hurting you. Most people, when they get into a narcissistic relationship, they don't go into it, one, thinking that it's narcissistic or knowing anything about it. And then two, they don't go into it with the idea of like, hey, let me go get abused. And that's why a lot of times it falls on deaf ears when people are just like, why didn't you just leave? Like, you should just lift. Like, nobody goes into those relationships expecting abuse. They go into the relationships expecting to be loving, to be respectful, to be honoring to one another, and to be mutually beneficial of growing together. But more than often, that's not the case in narcissistic relationships, where they're very manipulative, ego-driven, self-centered, and entitled. Then people don't see that at the initial state because it gets revealed over time. And as victims get groomed to be the person that the narcissist wants them to be, and as long as they fit in that mold, fit in that box, the relationship might be somewhat decent because they have to get with that abuse. They have to put up with what the other person is doing. As soon as they put up walls or as soon as they put up barriers or boundaries saying like, hey, I'm no longer going to accept this type of abuse, that's when you see it come out a lot more. The mask starts to drop, the abuse ramps up, and you get to see the person's true colors. Oftentimes people don't understand, don't see the narcissistic abuse side because they don't understand the patterns of what's actually happening. And that's what I want to talk to you today about. I want to talk to you about narcissistic patterns, so the patterns of that abuse that happens. So today we're going to be looking at the book, um, The Narcissist in Your Life by Julie Hall. And it's got a great little list here that I want to be able to go through of 16 different things, 16 different uh, patterns of behavior that are often prevalent in narcissistic abuse. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Ben Taylor. I run Raw Motivations as a self-aware narcissist and I'm on this channel and Instagram, TikTok, Facebook to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. Awareness about what narcissism is, how it affects people's lives, growth, healing, and change for the people out there that have been affected by narcissism and how to be able to break out of a trauma bond, how to be able to work through detoxing from that addictive person and how to be able to grow and continue to change and be healthy and happy setting boundaries in their lives so they don't go back or they don't get with another narcissistic person. But you have to be able to acknowledge the patterns that you're going to see in a narcissistic abusive relationship. If you can't acknowledge the patterns, then a lot of times you're setting yourself up for just it happening over and over and over again. So let's check these out. Number one, refusal to take responsibility. You'll see this prevalent in a lot of narcissism out there is they do not want to take responsibility for any of their actions. Taking responsibility for a narcissist's actions would be like the idea of having to be honest and vulnerable and truthful about what actually happened. This is why you're not going to see a narcissist actually say the words, I was wrong. I was wrong feels super degrading for the narcissist, attacks their ego, attacks their self-centeredness, attacks their entitlement to a place that says, hey, I have, I'm filled with shame and I'm filled with guilt because of what I did, but I can't acknowledge that. So we have to hide it. We have to move it under, under the surface. A lot of times I've talked about narcissism as having a raging river of shame that runs underneath, that propels the narcissism, that propels what they're doing. And that's often the case in the aspect of taking responsibility. Throughout my marriage, it wasn't something that could come out of my mouth. Me actually being able to say, I was wrong, literally felt impossible to be able to say. The words would just not come out. At the very most, it might come to the place of saying, like, I was less right. But actually saying I was wrong, saying that about myself, couldn't say it. I wouldn't say it. Number two, 
projection of abusive behavior and selfish motives onto others. See, the narcissist has a lot of selfishness. A narcissist has a lot of abusive behavior, but they don't want to admit, they don't want to take responsibility, but they don't want to admit that that's them. So as a result, they're going to take that and they're going to project that. They're going to project it on other people. You're actually the abusive one. You're the one that's yelling at me with reactive abuse. You're the one that's cheating on me by you know texting a friend of yours. Like You're the one, and they'll make up all these different things and project it on the other person to try to put the blame on you to try to make you feel like you're the bad guy. And all of a sudden you start noticing in the relationship, you're like, wait a second, I'm apologizing for what they did. Like they hurt me and I'm apologizing to them. And you start to notice small moments where you're not upset and they keep telling you that you're upset and then all of a sudden you're upset. You start to see them manipulating your emotions by how they're projecting their emotions onto you. It's almost like the narcissist takes these emotions and like, wow, I feel really selfish at this moment. I'm gonna do whatever I want and then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna throw it back on you. If I can project it onto you, then I don't have to feel it. The problem is consciously, deep down, they still know that they've done that and that just adds to that raging river of shame that's underneath. Number three, baiting, ridiculing, and humiliating often presented as teasing to gain advantage and feel superior. And this one is a classic in a lot of different ways. As a narcissist will be very quick to humiliate and humble someone else so that they feel better about themselves, so they can raise themselves up. Like, I'm going to cut you down so that I'm taller than you. I'm going to make you feel like the smallest thing around so that I feel better about myself. A lot of times how you're going to see this is in the form of baiting and, and I would say almost like teasing, how it kind of talked about there. A narcissist likes to give small jabs, small jokes, small things that are derogatory and demeaning to another person to see how they respond. You see, how you respond to someone's jokes well, gives them a good idea of how you're going to respond to their abuse. So if you take their jokes and you take their teasing and you take all of the derogatory things that get slid in it and you never say anything, that shows to them that, hey, you're willing to take more. You're willing to be abused more than what you actually know, what you actually realize, because of the fact that everything that I said in a teasing statement didn't put up any red flags. So as a result, I can continue moving forward with how I want to talk, treat, or abuse you. Be really careful if you're in a relationship or if you're interacting with someone and their jokes aren't very funny, or their jokes are funny, but at the cost of someone else, at the expense of someone else. You might be dealing with someone who's just testing those boundaries that wants to see, hey, can I say this degrading comment? Can I make this degrading joke just to see how that person responds? Oftentimes, they might be baiting you. Number four, hypersensitivity to slights and criticism. I was in a live the other day and someone asked about criticism and how narcissists like take criticism, things like that. And I was like, not well. Like to a narcissist, you giving any type of criticism is like an attack. Now, I'm not just talking about like slights or criticism like, you know, hey, I'm criticizing that person. I'm saying like even like positive, like even you saying like, hey, this constructive criticism to help you get better or like, hey, this is what I need your help with because you're not doing these things. That criticism there, it's a full out attack. That's what it feels like for the narcissist. Like everybody is just attacking them. Everybody's attacking their, their worth, their self-esteem, their image, their ego. Everybody is attacking the facade that they've built over that image, over what they're portraying to other people. And you'll see narcissists that'll buck up against that, that don't want to be able to engage with that because those criticisms feel like an attack. Number five, not four, five. Number five, pitting people against one another, aka divide and conquer. This one is a classic, and you normally see this in narcissism in the aspects of isolation where they isolate a person from everyone around so that that person can only depend on the narcissist for their validation, for their confidence, for their finances, for a place to live, whatever it might be. I know early on as I was on the platform, like I had people when I talked about isolation, they were like, that would never happen to me. Like how ridiculous. I would never let someone just tell me I can't hang out with other people. And the thing I had to tell people is like, narcissists don't, always tell you not to hang out with another person. They'll put in those slight comments. 
those slight jabs. They'll show you a screen text from someone else or one that they manufacture saying like, hey, like, look what they said about you. Like, I'm just kind of uncomfortable about your friends. Like, your friends kind of give me, like, a weird vibe. Like, your family, like, I love your family, but, like, something just seems, like, off. Like, they're almost, like, controlling you. And they'll start to put in these slight things that only does as a slight sliver of doubt. And then when something happens in that family or friendship dynamic, they'll say, see, like, they're trying to break us up. Or, see, like, this is what I was talking about. Like, it just, it just doesn't sit right. And you get enough of those over a period of time, you get to the place where the narcissist then is like, you know, do you really want to hang out with them or would you rather hang out with me? Like they're trying to control you. They're trying to manipulate in this way. Like I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to support you. They'll twist stuff like crazy. What you have to think about is if you're with somebody and you start to notice that, hey, you're getting pitted against other people or other people are falling off your radar for some reason or the other, Why? There might be a cause that you don't actually realize. There might be a cause of why you're separating from some of your family members or why you're separating from some of your friends that's not based on them being toxic, but it's based on the relationship that you're in, ultimately being toxic and ultimately pulling you away and isolating you even more. <laughs>